time coming, but finally we've got onto the mechanicals and the engine. Um, and apologise for not recording all of this, but essentially I put it uh, onto the crane, back onto the um, motor mount here, the engine stand. I had a little bit of an issue actually being able to turn it over um, on the stand because the the flywheel was in the way, so I've taken the, the flywheel off and uh, got these two little dull pins down here. Um, the main bolt for the crank was pretty stiff, um, probably overly tightened, not by myself, but so to get that off and to 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 access all the the, the gubbins behind the timing cover, uh, I had to actually gently put in a flat-bladed screwdriver just behind those dowels. There is a tool, I think there's a, a locking pin you can get there um, when you've got the flywheel on, but anyway, as I've taken it off, I just wedged a screwdriver in there and gave it a little bit of torquing. It didn't actually take much to give, so I wasn't I wasn't in danger of bending the dowels. So that's uh, now come off, so I'm going to take the, the pan off. I've actually taken the sump off already. Um, there's only a couple of bolts just holding that in just to have a look at the, the oil pickup and the pump and it all looks quite nice. Equally, I've taken off the tappet covers at the side um, just to see the, the lifter falling down already. Um, that's uh, The seals all need to be replaced here, or, sorry the gaskets all need to be replaced. And the one that's on the left hand side or I should say nearest to the front of the car has got the crankcase breather tube on it so that um, connects to the, to the carb. The pulley itself is off. One, what I did note, and I've had a bit of um, an expert coming to to have a look at this as well. We'll look at the internals of the engine. Is that the actual motor mount on the driver's side was a little bit bent, and the um, I might be able to show you the rubbers on that side had actually started to lift off. Um, maybe not see it through the bag, but the rubbers actually started to come away from the metal, so that was actually sort of canted in at a, at a bit of an angle rather than being being plain with the with the engine block so I'll get a new one of them they're not too expensive I'll possibly even get a second hand one um, the interesting thing that I'm still trying to work out and again as I say I've had a bit of guidance on this is that where the diff is if we look over here there's a little olive nut on the top of this vacuum so this has got a little diaphragm inside it for the vacuum advance this would connect to the manifold um, and usually there's a little drilled and tapped hole and there'd be a tube connecting that little capillary tube. Now in my case there was no tubing on the engine when I took it when I first got the car delivered. Um, it's a slightly different olive at the top there and this whole assembly in, inside the distributor we thought was seized but actually doing a little bit of research and getting a few other people's opinions there is a way of apparently putting uh, weights on this and the weights um, th on the distributor are enough to to do the advance of the retard so the, the diaphragm is actually not functioning at all so that explains why there wasn't a, a tubing so I'll see in the final build I'm planning to put a Petronix electric ignition in here, electronic ignition in here um, and, and again I think you just need to work out which kind of distributor cap you have and which one you get whether it's for the, the leads coming out from the side or the leads coming out from the top there's a slightly different pack um, but that's a long way away but um, for the time being I'm just going through, trying to keep everything orderly. The engine turns over nicely. It doesn't seem like it's fused. We've obviously got to have a look at the bore and have a look at the, the pistons to see if there's any um, work being done on the engine before. It strikes me that this has probably had a little bit of work to it because if I take you over to where I'm keeping track of all the, the valve assembly um, on some of these nuts, the ones that have come out with the with the head bolt. They've been turned between centres on a lathe. There's a little depression, a little divot in the top of the bolt. Um, so it's obviously had some work. So there's a couple that have come out with the with the bolts. Most of them are just coming off with the nuts and the washers. So um, I'm just going through this bit at a time. And uh, I'll keep you posted with progress. I'll try and uh, turn the engine over, or I say flip it over and take the sump off and show you the internals there and when we get into the main block. Again, I'll try and update this video, uh, but a bit of work to be done, but we're moving ahead, we're moving ahead. Okay, so we're a little bit further forward in the, the tear down of the engine. Um, I should probably take you over to a few of the, 
things that were found when the sump came off it, it looked a little bit suspect um, it did look like there was some water mixing in that oil oil sump there and when the um, the screw on oil filter came off there was a lot of sort of whitish gunge in there as well it didn't didn't overtly look um, like it was mixing but it just didn't look quite healthy and so when the the main bearings came off and we took the the pistons out pretty much all the main journals looked really nice until we got to the middle one with the thrust thrust bearings and you can't obviously make it out too much it's smooth but I can just make a little bit of not a ridge but just a little imperfection in the top there and it just looked a little bit less than healthy when you compared it to the other ones which look beautiful so the um the engine itself, if I can maybe have to turn it over, has actually been machined, the crank has been machined down by 10 thou. So the the rods and the, the main bearings, the journals I should say, sorry, have been, have been machined and everything looks really nice and healthy. Equally, I haven't taken the cam out yet, but it looks in pretty good nick. And with the history I've got of this engine and some of the things that we've found, if it has a racing pedigree, or at least it's been raced at some stage, um, I didn't buy it for that reason, if anything it's probably going to become a little bit of a nuisance all the modifications that have been done because it's going to be very torquey and probably not, when I get it going, not going to idle very very nicely, it will probably want to go at high speeds but the um, the cam may well be a, a slightly modified cam as well. Uh, the uh, didn't give you much of a, a look at the running gear, this is all nice and healthy, the, uh, the lifters themselves are just like new, I don't know if you can Maybe with the, if I get the light just right, you can kind of make out the circles there where it's actually been machined. So they are so new. This has not done much of a mileage since this work was done. As I remarked before, the the rods are the sorry the the bolts are actually uh, better quality as well. High tensile. They've been machined with with the little divots at the top between laid. The valve gear itself and the mechanisms it all runs nice and freely. So basically everything here is new. Um, which is a win because this engine was bought. Oops, this engine was bought not knowing what I was buying because I never heard it run. So I think I've kind of got got off lightly there with the the way everything looks. Uh, I'll move this aside for a second to chat about that in a bit. Equally, uh, bearings um, on the well. I'll look at show you the main. I'll show you the big end bearings, but the main bearings look nice and healthy there's no um, scoring or pitting they again look pretty new there was no nasty marks on that and the same on the big end bearings pistons obviously this one's got a little bit of stuff on it I've got on it but it'll come up nicely with some degreaser or some bit of work and um, they look nice and healthy again it's probably not going to come out too well on the camera I can try and get it to focus you can see even between the the lands the the grooves on the faces here, so that's had so little engine usage. Yeah, that's a better picture. But uh, these are again fairly new. It's been not it's been run in, but it's not it's not done a huge mileage with these pistons. Uh, all the rings look nice and healthy. Uh, I will get these. I'll take these out and just check that they're all right. And I mean, it may well be even be worthwhile since we've torn the engine down to just replace them all. Um, so everything from, from this point of view, sorry, apologies for the focusing, everything looks healthy here, however with those little bits of gunginess in the oil pan uh, and that slight sort of um, slight sort of rusting or slight sort of pitting on that middle journal there turned my attention to the head and sure enough there's a big break, so there's a blown head gasket um, the the valve springs and everything look nice, but on the side there's different. Sorry for the background noise. There's different size valves. It's been upgraded for racing, uh, but there's a lot of crud, crud in the in the water jacket. So there has been at some stage, and um, you can see here I've punched out the the core plugs. And um, you just if you have anyone's doing this and you're replacing everything, um, they're not expensive at all. You basically drill into it, make a hole, and then lever it out with a screwdriver. That's the best way. There's three core plugs along the side. It's obviously upside down the engine, and there's a a fourth one in behind here, which um, 
to, to, to properly access it, you'll have to remove the faceplate. Uh, there is a way of doing it if you go into the MGA Guru site. There is a way of doing it with a bolt and uh, threading it in. You can actually even do it with the engine in situ, apparently, with the engine still in the car. So, uh, you can see how there's a lot of crud in here. Um, the question now is the block should be machined just to deck it and flatten it down. I'll have to remove the studs that are that are in there as well. If I'm going to go to all the bother of that and send it to a machine shop, should I just completely tear it down? Well, it will have to be torn down. I'll have to remove the crank and the cam and everything. Um, should I get acid bathed and just completely cleaned out? And same with the head as well. That obviously increases the costs, so I'll have to do some phoning to see how much that will be. Um, the project is obviously starting to build up the costs. We're now at the pointy end of things when I'm having to buy large items and obviously new bearings and new rings and seals and gaskets and all the rest of it. Uh, if I do that, obviously we're going to have to take off all the timing chain. This is the tensioner here. There's a little Allen key in here which is actually going to to, to be used for, for tightening it with this sort of um, push rod here. It's a hydraulic sort of um, valve that actually acts uh, to spread the oil about as well. Um, so all of this will come off. Uh, that's not not difficult. It just adds extra time. Obviously, the faceplate comes off front and back. Take the crank out. I've still got to get the um, these top front and back uh, main uh, bearings out. The reason I can't do that is that I need a half inch UNF threaded bolt which I don't have and um, this is a public holiday today in Australia so nowhere is open but what I'm planning to do is uh, put the bolt down there and then kind of like, like a slap hammer pull up on it and see if I can get this this one out at the back and at sorry front and, and back with the plate still on but as I'm now having to take it to the machine shop I'll probably have to take all these plates off either anyway that'll make it nice and I make it considerably easier so a little bit more work to be done to completely tear it down but in the whole yes it has to go to the machine shop and yes there's a little bit of our work to be done to deck the deck the block but I think I got off lightly in the fact that the crank is like new uh, the cam is like new the lifters the valve gear and everything looks like new Yes, there's a bit of crud in there, but the acid bath will sort that out. I'll get all new gaskets for going around the tappet covers, sump gaskets, seals, all the rest of it. Fun and games. Uh, projects cranking along with the engine. I haven't seen the body. Um, I'm still waiting on some parts from Kilmartins to come up, which will be for the sills. I had the sill assembly, but I've got to get some uh, inner sill pieces. Um, rather than fabricating them, I thought I'd just buy them and do the the easy, lazy way out. But um, they'll be suit fit for purpose. Uh, what we did discover, and I don't know if I commented in the, oh, I did. I commented in the other video. I'm looking for a, uh, an offside engine mount bracket. Um, so if anyone has one, let me know. I may well be able to trade you something. I've now got two cylinder gaskets and a, and a couple of handbrake cables so I'll keep on buying things in duplicate by mistake uh, everything else looks good the bores look nice there's no scoring or scratching so uh, the next thing is to take out the rest of this bearings and lift the crank out try and remove all these studs get it ready to go to the machine shop so I will keep you updated with progress I hope everyone is well out there on your projects if there's anything else you want me to talk about, I'll try and next time spend a little bit more time in the production of these videos because I know we've got a lot of background noise and the lighting's not great. So um, I'll endeavour to make something a little bit slicker and more professional, but this is just a sort of mobile phone state of, state of progress on the fly. Give everyone a proper look in. Speaking to the, the knowledgeable people here, the places that these leak and you have to spend a bit of time on is the tappet covers are notorious for leaking. You can get silicon gaskets. Um, the cork gaskets, I think, are just as good, but the, the bolt that goes in here is a little seal, an umbrella seal underneath it. That's what you need to be particularly careful about seating. Um, again, the front... Sorry, the, the, the seal on this side, again, is notorious for oil leaking. There's no evidence of any of that here. And the other place, obviously, the leak is will be the timing chain cover.
and on mine, although it's filthy, there's no evidence that oil's been leaking out. This would be the underside here, the inferior side and the timing chain mark. Um, so there's no oil staining there, so I think I've got off lightly with a car that hadn't been leaking. Um, it would obviously just been sitting stationary when the cylinder head gasket blew. So there's the oil pump itself. We need obviously new gaskets for that. That comes in the set with the lower end gaskets. Um, it's a bit gungy again because there's probably some water mixed in there. So clean everything out, give everything a bit of a a degrease and a and a tidy up. The distributor sitting there with its gear. Need to put everything on a on a on a polishing wheel, the rocker cover, but really the main the main job for the time being is just finishing the strip down, taking off all the timing gear, taking off the face the front and back plates, getting rid of those studs. And we'll go from there. Alright, that's it for the day.